All right, I'm here with Snickers. That's Snickers up there. Snickers is a very, uh, adopted about two years, two months ago, very fearful, was probably abused, probably by men or wasn't associated around positives around men. So uh, it's very hard for me to work with her. So I'm doing a lot of description. That's why I'm gonna be doing this video. So basically, um, one of the things that really sets her off, she doesn't like, is the, the bus, the hydraulics of a city bus. When it comes by and stops, it's making that kind of a hissing sound. She really doesn't like that. Now, dogs in the animal world, a lot of animals will make a hissing sound as a warning. If it's uncomfortable, you can put the tripod on your actual knee. Um, I've done this a lot, so it mm -hmm. makes it easier. I want to be comfortable for you. So basically, um, what we want to do is we want to do, I do counter conditioning and desensitization kind of together. So what I would do, and for her, there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing this, but I'm just trying to think of the best way for her. So what I recommend for her, when I work with dogs that have an issue, what I like to do is I find a sliver or a slice of whatever the giant, the, the, the entirety of the thing is. So if she doesn't like a bus, there's the sight of the bus, there's the smell of the bus, there's the sound of the bus, there's the motion of the bus. All those things are, that's four different things that I'm dealing with. That might be overwhelming for a fearful dog. So what I would do instead is go to where those buses hang out or you know where a stop is or where that hissing happens, pull out your phone and record with an audio app, record the audio of it. Then come back home, well she's not there, just you, you're just capturing the audio for her. And then basically come home and what you would do is play that at very, very low volume and then give her a treat. You don't have to say your mark word, just play it, give her a treat. The bus is not here. She's in her home. Do this when no guests are here. So she's as relaxed as she can. If she has difficulty with it, you can exercise her a little bit first, give her that 10 minutes of rest we talked about, then practice this. And just play a little couple seconds and then treat. Play a couple seconds, treat, and try to do this all over your house. Dogs don't generalize well. And maybe the first day you're at volume two. If she's doing pretty well, then you might go to volume three, volume four. We're gonna go very progressively, and not necessarily each one. Probably do, I don't wanna say 10 treats at this volume and then this treat, because it's all very much subjective to the dog. But basically, you wanna just keep on playing that sound and then following it with a treat. So the sound is now an indicator when we get a treat. So we're desensitizing and creating a counter conditioning response. And then eventually we're gonna raise that louder and louder until your phone is going as loud as it can. Then you're gonna play it through your sound bar here or if you have speakers, so you got a big sub right back here. So you wanna to get to the point where it sounds like that bus is running through your living room and she is completely content. Now she moves her head around, looks a little bit, that's okay. I don't worry, if she gets up and moves away from it, you're probably too loud. And one of the common mistakes people make is they get greedy. They go for too much at once. This should be a one minute practice session at max and just, and afterwards give her a little massage, go for a walk, do something she likes to do. So eventually that sound is now an indicator of something good. You can use this for anything that she is reacted to. Now, I'm pretty sure she has cortisol in her blood. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It shuts down non-essential body functions. It can make dogs, give dogs PTSD. Humans that are in that heightened sense of alert for too long, it's not healthy. It starts shredding your insides. So it can take up to three days for that, to, uh, for your body to dissipate and get that out of the blood. While that's going on, it really affects your appetite, your edginess, your alertness, and all the rest of that stuff. It makes it harder for her to sleep and focus and relax. And so she just gets out of sorts. So she may be a candidate that medication may be helpful for. I talked to the guardians about talking to that or vet about that. Um, and that is not something we tend to think of medication. We have a negative association in our brain. Medication can help balance out your brain, brain chemistry. In some situations, I'm too triggered. And by bringing the volume down on my triggers, I can learn to practice around them. Now eventually, after you got to the point where it sounds like there's a bus in here, then I would go to that same place that we walked her at where the buses come by frequently, try to find a day when there's a lot of buses are coming by. Now I, I lower the intensity one of three ways. I increase the distance, I slow down the speed, or I turn down the volume. I can turn down the volume and increase the distance inside on my phone, I cannot do that out there. So that's why I would do that where I can control all the elements. Then when I go to the park, probably again after exercise, give her 10 minutes rest, go to the park, then the bus comes by and makes the hissing sound, it gets done, give her a treat, provided she didn't freak out. If she freaks out, move her further away from the street. Keep on moving her away until she's close enough where she can hear it, she's aware of it, but doesn't get startled by it. And then, and then gradually, you get closer and closer. This might be five practice sessions, 10 practice. It'll take longer to do, but the benefit of this is if you do it right, in most cases, the dog gets over it for good because now it's association with a good thing. Now we can do desensitization by itself, but I don't find it's as effective as if you're pairing it with something positive, like getting a treat at the end. Now that's the proper order. We want the, the stimulus to happen and get a treat, but in some cases the dog is too fearful, I invert that to be when we start. 
I give the dog a treat, then play the sound of uh, the bus. Or I might hold a treat, uh, a treat like a tricky trainer, something that's soft and chewy, where she can nibble on it while, the play, while it's going on. But eventually we want to flip it so that the sound comes or the sight comes or the whatever it is comes, then I'm followed by a treat. But the important thing is she cannot be scared by it. And that's why we have to go very slowly at her speed and gradually raise that intensity level till eventually we get to the full bore thing and we've worked her up so progressive she's relaxed. Now that's, that's basically counter conditioning and desensitization. Now there's something else that I do, um, and you can go to my website and search for Boba, B-O-B-A, and you'll get a video of me doing this with him in a park, watch me doing it. Now at the end, we're doing this at the, vi at the end of the video, and you can see he has got joy in his body. He's jumping around, he's, he's super happy. Boba doesn't like when people talk to him. He's fine if you walk by and you say, hey Boba, he barks and wants to do not nice things to you. So what I did is a version of behavior adjustment training with some counter conditioning and desensitization, compliments of our friend Laura Schaefer. So what I did basically is I went to this park in Santa Monica where there's plenty of green space. There are people there and there's some dogs there, but enough space where I can, and there's enough green space where if a person's walking towards us, I can walk the other way. I'm going to manage the situation so Boba, in that case, did not have to. As a matter of fact, in that case, I couldn't be working with Boba. I'm talking to Boba on my uh, Boba's guardian, my earbuds, and she's 25 feet away because he's not comfortable with me being that close to him. So for you guys, you can do it yourself. I probably have you start out doing it, but have you do it as a couple, and then eventually you can take the leash over at some point. But we, he's more secure with you, so let's always start out. Anything is difficult. We start off with you because he gains confidence. Just like anything else, we gain. We learn how to do it. We're insecure as we're learning. Once we learn how to do it, then we have some confidence, then we can have a more difficult level, gradually level up. So basically what I did was I just, I do a lot of find it's, but any time that he has any positive association with whatever the boogaboo was, his guard, I had his guardian give him a treat. So he looked at a person that he normally be scared of. Good, give him a treat. What happens, right? I'm looking at the, and it's good. What did I just do? The bad, the thing I'm fearful of is here. Good, and then I turned to get the treat from you. What did I just do? I turned away from the, the thing I don't like. This is a version of called the engage disengage game, with, but we're doing it with desensitization and counter conditioning. So now I look at the guy and I get a treat. Look at the guy and get a treat. He's not touching me. He's not close enough for me to feel threatened. Let's say I walk by and the dog walks by. I look at the dog and yeah, whatever, I go back to sniffing. Mark a word and pet your dog. You don't have to actually mark a word for it. Just pet your dog. So um, walks by somebody in a good way, good. Um, anything that I like. Um, if the dog's coming towards you, touch the nose, find it, and throw it away from the thing. The dog goes and gets it, gets it over and over again. Make sure you find it in a lot of places when there aren't dogs there. If you only do it when dogs are there, find it, oh, there's a dog over there. So we want them to grab, which I want to move away. Um, and so the, and now, if the dog starts looking at me for treats all the time, then I kind of stop giving treats. I want to give the treats as a reinforcement, but I don't want the dog to ignore their surroundings and only look at me. If your treats are too high of value, they might do that. You might have go with the lower value treats. Talk about the tricky trainers as well as the uh, Charlie Bears. So you might may use Charlie Bears. Um, for parks, I like, usually like using string cheese. If, if, as long as it's not lactose and get a roll of string cheese, slice it like nickels. So you can throw it, it shows white circles show up great on green grass. And do, uh, cheese is good for dogs. And then uh, sometimes I'll take shredded cheese. Swiss is my favorite because that has the best aroma. And I'll spread sh shredded cheese in the grass at certain areas for some dogs that don't sniff. And I on a walk, I go out and walk the neighborhood first. And I put a little here. Two houses later, I put a little bit of the grass here. Then I lead the dog to those places. The dog's like, holy cow, there's great, great stuff here. I'm sniffing the ground. Sniffing is calming, it's relaxing, it's a natural activity the dogs do and it drains energy. And if I'm sniffing the ground, I'm not looking for the boogeyman. And so, some, if you're, so as long as it's safe to do so, always let your dog sniff. And if you have a fearful dog, anytime your dog wants to move away, let them move away as much, and you should reward your dog when it does that. Also, I reward shakes off, shaking it off. For dogs, if it's stressed and they shake it off, they're literally shaking off the stress. I would say the mark word for that, good, and then pet. And that's that celebrating we talked about earlier. Um, but if I go to that park, that's a much better environment than right over here, we're in downtown Santa Monica. There's buses, there's all sorts of people. All those extra things are gonna add a little bit of edginess, a little bit more, a little, I'm a little bit more on edge. If I'm in a big green space, I can look in every direction, see that nobody's coming out, I can lower my guard a little bit. Um, so try to find those opportunities and places where he's gonna feel, she's gonna feel more relaxed. Um, and then uh, we also talked about dog consent. Now, um, the dog consent thing, I have a video so I can share that with you guys as well. But the thing is, if you, uh, one of the guardians is male, one of the guardians is a female. Uh, she's more comfortable with, with the female. So we went over, if this, if this glass is the dog, I, what I always like people to do is offer my hand, backside of my head, 
but on the front side. I stop about an inch or two away from the dog. If the dog comes and nudges my hand, the dog's saying, yes, I'm interested in interacting with you. And then I can reach down and pet under the, excuse me, under, <coughs> if I can get it out, <coughs> under the chin. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, technical, technical snafu. Um, but if I hold my hand out and the dog does not, it just freezes, doesn't nudge me or turns away or lowers it back away, saying I don't feel like interacting and I just don't push it anymore, that's gonna help the dog feel more comfortable. Now I do have, uh, there's uh, some other stuff you can do. Um, you can go to a place where people are gonna be wandering around. I like to sit. Now I also never ask a dog to sit more than once if I suspect they're fearful. Because if you force them to sit, ask them, they might do it, but then they feel trapped and they're more likely to bite and lash out. Standing is more comfortable for them. Now when we sit down, dogs think we're gonna be there for a minute. So they're more likely to relax and sit down unless the environment's too charged. So what I would do is find a place where maybe a good people watching place, not Venice, but you know something like hopefully there's some grass you can sit on. And every time your dog looks at whatever the thing is you don't like, good. And then they, this is the engage, disengage. So let's say that over here is, is, is something I'm scared of and I'm the dog. So I'm kind of hanging out and the guardian's right here and I just kind of like, good. And I turn away to get the treat. So now all you do is look at the, and then I might look at you, good. And I'm turning away. So this is the disengage part of the engage, disengage game. After you do this enough, and this is probably multiple practice sessions, let's say that the boogeyman is over here. I didn't say good. The dog is used to looking at them and then looking away from them. And then I'm saying good for looking back at me. At first I'm marking when the dog looks at the thing that I don't want and then providing a reward, but holding it in a way where the dog disengages. And after a while, the dog will look and disengage on its own. When it does it the first time, give it a jackpot. Jackpot would be good, one, two, three, four, five treats. Don't count them, just counting for the purposes of this. What sticker's going, what the S did I just do? Cause I just got the mother load of treats, man. I gotta remember that so I can do that again. So this is something you can do in your living room as well. But again, I prefer doing it outside because there's infinite escape routes and uh, the dogs also has a lot of distractions. Uh, now, so basically, so that's a version of the engage disengage game. You do that with skateboards, you can do it with looking at the buses, um, you have a relative or somebody comes by. Speaking of which, um, meeting. I would recommend that all of your meetings, we talked about this, I just figured encapsulate on one video, meet outside in that green area. So tell people, hey, you wanna meet us? Park at our place, park in the garage, and I'm walk across the street. You'll see who your good friends are, the ones that are willing to do it. And if you have friends that are not gonna to listen to you and gonna pet the dog anyways, because I'm good with dogs, don't use that person. Whoever it is needs to be listening to you guys and take their shots or their cues from you. And if they don't wanna do it, use that person later on for proofing. So now I've already mastered, or I hate trying to purge my, using that word. Um, but now my dog knows how to do this. Now I'll bring the challenging person in to see how the dog does with the challenging person because it is a friend and I can say, stop it, you're gonna get bit. And then the friend will listen at that point. But we prefer to start off with our friends who are very easy and listen to be accommodating. Um, so what I do, and sometimes, uh, uh, remember for dogs, front facing is confrontational for uh, me. This is the most confrontational position. Well, actually, this is the most confrontational position I can be, towering over a dog. This is more approachable sideways. Behind you, fearful dogs are more likely to bite you from behind. So um, what I would have your friends come over and I would probably, I would guess that female friends are probably gonna be easier than male friends, especially if the male friends are big. Men, we have this deep voice and we're big and we have, we're hairy and we're smelly. Uh, but the idea is um, that can be intimidating for a dog. And what we do, we lean over and pet him on top of the head, which we talked about dogs don't like. So if it's gonna be a male, what I would do is make sure you exercise her first, give her 10 to 15 minutes to recover. The male is sitting there on the grass. And I might even give them like some of the tricky trainers and have them just toss in the tree. And so she, you walk by it, maybe 20 feet, toss a treat. And then if Snickers eats a treat, we know that Snickers is comfortable at that distance. You can walk around, don't just walk around and walk and let Snickers shake it off and then come back. And so all we're doing is just the person's tossing treats. Um, so then she gets to meet the person and then when a person gets up, you could be giving the dog treats as the person stands, because standing up, oh, the person's getting some authority. So that might be difficult. So if that's the case, throw some treats or just pull her, or don't pull her, call her away. And then that way the person get up, uh, can stand up. Better thing to do, since she knows how to catch, give them some of those tricky trainers and have her, whatever distance, and have them throw treats. Now when we throw treats for dogs, we go like this. One, two, and the dog's like, where did it go? And then the third one hits them in the head. So just try to toss it underhand, such a good throw that it would go in the dog's mouth that they just simply open their mouth. 
She already knows how to catch, so she's probably better at this. So basically, if he's sitting down, so she gets to come up, and if, if at any point she wants to sniff the person, the person should freeze. And don't, don't try to pet her, don't reciprocate. Let her do all the sniffing. Wait for her to exit and move away. Also be wary of other things. Let's say she's sniffing you, and you see there's a mentally unbalanced homeless person who's walking towards you, screaming. You would call her away. Because otherwise, if she's going to sniff that person and that person, uh, the homeless person screams, that could create an association with the person you're trying to do. So we want to try to control the environment as much as we can, but that's nice and convenient for you, so you have to kind of, uh, yeah, weigh your options. Um, okay, so um, uh, another thing that we do, when I, and what I was doing here, and she warmed up to me better, I mean, for you guys, according to you guys, than most people. She didn't come all the way up to me, but that was good progress. I'm just throwing treats. I'm not throwing treats only to make her come towards me. So you might have uh, your guests give them one of those treat pouches. There you go. And then that's okay. And I ordered one of those, loaded up with, with the treats. So they got it on their deal. Um, oil it. I did notice that she, mine's a little, a little, open that up. That sound, I would counter condition her with that sound. Open the sound, give her a treat. Close it, give her a treat. Anything she's fearful of, the fir first start we went on this video, make a list. Knock all of that stuff out. Because if there's 10 of those things and each one of them occurs 20 time, two times a day, that's 20 things that's triggering. It's going to make me on edge. If you systemize it, systematically desensitize for all those and counter condition, now, we go, now I'm in a much better starting point. So what I would do is have that person um, uh, tossing the treats for her, and when they come inside, uh, and then when you come back, walk, I would try to also sneakily do the leash thing. So you're walking together. First, you're walking around the person. They're throwing treats, and she's getting the treats. Then when they get up, and then you go over a little walk in the green area. At some point, when she's not paying attention, you kind of hand leash them. They're holding leash. They're not pulling her. We're following, letting her go wherever she wants. And if we can, it'd be nice if you guys could sit down in the grass and have the person kind of walk around the grass like I did so she can still see you. She security bank, I feel comfortable. But I'm spending a little bit of time with this person. Now, if we start off with a lot of females and people who are uh, more comfortable, then I get experienced and practiced and comfortable with this interaction. I would also have you guys, that's the place you guys take her out for potty, so do some treats. Where are we gonna have the person put? Hold on a bunch of treats there. She's like, I wanna come to the park, I'm going to this spot, because this is where all the treats are always hanging out, man. Oh, there's a person there? Well, and you have the treats too? You're the source of the treats? You're like a keeper elf, I love you. And so the idea is we're creating those positive associations. So when we come back in, if you can, have, if she's comfortable and they're, and they're confident, and experience, have them handle the leash all the way back if you're comfortable with that. And then, uh, and if any time there's a stop, like that's a place we stop to do the hand targeting, stop, sit down for a minute, and give her another chance to come and sniff the person. Again, they shouldn't interact with her at all. Uh, just let her be passive, let her do it. When they come back inside, put a seat, you're, like we talked about, make sure that, that section is open next to the couch, and then basically try to get them, make sure that she's not trapped. Like, She's right up here right now. She's not coming down because she feels a little bit trapped because I'm right here. So yeah, I might have the person sitting over there or whatever the case may be. It's logistics, you've got to do what you got to do. Because uh, you're only, but we moved the table away so she had bigger space. So I have the person just toss a treat and if she kind of gets stuck, have them throw the treat behind her. Charlie bears are great for this because if I throw a Charlie bear, let's see if we can get her up, but it makes that sound. And also with the flooring here, it's gonna, uh, it shows up. Dogs' eyes, they, they're blue, yellow, colorblind. They see everything in, gray, in grays, blues, or yellows. And so that shows up a lot easier than if it's, I mean, you couldn't even see one of the brown treats on the ground. And we're humans, we can see those, unless you're colorblind. Um, and so now we can get her, if the dog sits there, they can really focus on their boogeyman. So if I'm, the person throw a treat here, they throw a treat there, and they can play catch with her at the park, they can throw play catch with her here, eventually she might get a little bit closer to get that treat, get that treat. And eventually, when they do want to offer treats, make sure they're always offering the treats off to the side. Don't look at her. Just hold your hand on. If you want to watch her, I might hold my phone up with it off so I can look just like I'm looking at the reflection here. Look at that. So she came down to get those. We didn't say, come and get them. Here, come and get them. Come get them. We made them available. She wants to get them. Great. So when she musters the confidence for herself, she is rewarded for it. But again, when this happens, the person should, I'm talking, I've been talking for two and a half hours, so she's okay with it. The person should probably shut up. And just be silent and let her get those treats. Um, now, there's a whole bunch of other little things, but I think I really think that uh, your vet, if you talk to your vet, fluoxetine might be uh, something that would be very beneficial for her if mm -hmm. your vet and you concur. Uh, that takes about four weeks to kick in. Once it's on, she's on fluoxetine, it's very important she's on a consistent, however your vet has prescribed it. And when you want to wean her off of it, you don't do it abruptly. 
talk to your vet. I would like to wean her off. And they might say, okay, let's do half a dose or whatever it is. She might need it twice a day. So maybe they have, whatever they're gonna do. I am not a veterinary behavior, so I don't wanna give medical advice. It's not appropriate for me to do so. Um, but also, um, teaching her new tricks and cues are a great way to boost her confidence. So what I, and that was great. She offered, she said, no thanks, and you didn't push it. So you might, for the training, you might also do the same thing first, where you do the training, and then after the dog, after your snickers feel comfortable, then you do one, a couple reps, then you do a rep, then she does a rep, she goes back and forth, back and forth, she feels comfortable. Um, I've got a bunch of videos, all sorts of training stuff, so if there's an exercise you wanna teach her how to you know, roll over on her side or whatever it is, let me know, and I can share those with you. Just make, you can go to YouTube as well, just make sure they're positive. If it's anything where she offers cutoff signals or training anything else, stop it. And remember, always keep a training two or three minutes and always end on a positive. All right, well, this is my buddy Snickers. You're such a good looking girl. And that was too much for her. Mm -hmm. And my eye contact for, oh, maybe not. Snickers. Mm -hmm. That was too much. And that's okay. <laughs> and it might take a couple visits before she relaxes enough for somebody to feel comfortable enough to take a treat from them. Um, hey, Snickers. Yeah, sweetheart. I can see you had some puppies at some point. She's got those big mother nipples. Um, all right, well, uh, behind the, the couch somewhere is Snickers, and this is uh, a video uh, with some tips that you can use if you have a dog that's fearful or uh, scared around people or new experiences or sounds.